So hello and welcome once again to New Junction. Today I'm going to show you how I'm adding sleeper space track to my layout and of course super elevation. Oh, I've got trains running as well. So welcome back to New Junction. Now, believe it or not, this is the second time I filmed this video because I filmed the first half of laying the track uh, on the layout and then realized I didn't have any sound. So hopefully, touch wood, we've got sound this time around. So I'm going to show you today my method of sleeper spacing the track. Now, I will warn you, a lot of people will say this is a complete waste of time and you are exactly right. It is a complete waste of time. Um, however, I really wanted to try it. After seeing it on uh, Everard Junction, good old Richard, who forced me to do it, twisted my arm, um, I just wanted to have a go. And of course, because I've used the bullhead track on the Heritage Line, it's much closer. It's a much closer representation to that track. So with a few tools in the name of Railway Laser Lines Sleeper Spacing Tool, and of course, West Hill Wagon Works Super Elevation Kits, I'm going to show you now how I lay track on the main line with no track pins using glue and uh, hopefully it's a different method, something a bit interesting, but uh, I think we should get on. First things first, I'm going to get a piece of track out and uh, start sleeper spacing. So here we see two lengths of the uh, Co 75 track. This is the front one is how it comes out of the box and the rear one is once I've had my way with it and spaced the sleepers. Now, um, you can see there is a uh, quite obvious visual difference between the first one and the second. However, to most people, um, it might not be enough to be worth this effort. However, I wanted to do it, um, and uh, well, I'm quite enjoying the process so far. So I'm gonna show you now how I make this piece of track look like this piece of track, ready to go down on the layout. So first things first, I'm going to carefully take this spaced piece and put it out of the way and take the unspaced and turn it right over. Because the first job is using a scalpel is to cut all the webbing. And what I do is I tend to go down, down one side, flip it over and go back up the other. Right, so that's the first job. Once you've done that and you've let your hands recover, um, it's probably best to do this in a warm uh, space as opposed to cold garage or loft because you really feel it in your joints. So the next phase um, is to take every fifth sleeper and just pull it off the rails. But be very careful because um, now the webbing's not attached, um, the other sleepers do like to pop off if you're not careful. So. I'm just going to count through five and remove every fifth one. And there we go. As you can see, we've been left with a very patchy piece of track. But uh, it just gives you the freedom, once using the uh, sleeper spacing tool, to uh, be able to play with the sleepers and move them around a bit easier. Right, so keeping on top of my workspace, I'm just going to put these sleepers in a handy wagon, save them for later. So here is my very strange looking piece of track. Now you could do this next step in situ when you lay it on the layout. However, I like to do it now, just so it makes the laying of it on the layout a bit less stressful because you're normally trying to glue it at that point. So taking the smaller of the Railway Laser Lines uh, sleeper spacing tools, I measure, 
sizes up against the sleepers for the first one and using the fingertips just carefully hopefully you can see this move the sleepers to the rough location now the first one's always a bit fiddly however it's it's all really easy so I'm just gonna line that up There we go. As you saw, I turned it uh, vertical once the sleep is allowed, and it gets much easier from this point. So, as you can see, it's very nicely sleep has based it. All you have to be careful of, again, is if you nudge it, um, or a bit too heavy handed with a piece of track, they will move now, because there's nothing really holding them in situ. Um, however, it doesn't really matter as long as they're roughly spaced. So what I do is, obviously we've got the first uh, load of sleepers done there. I put the first point in the last space, put a bit of pressure down, and then using the other two fingers, just pull the sleepers along so they fit in the gaps, and it just nicely drops down. And it's actually quite a relaxing process. So I'm now gonna continue and sleeper space this piece of track, like so. And you can see the advantage now of removing the fifth uh, sleeper because it just gives you the space to, to pull the sleepers about. And there we go. And once it settles in position, if you just give it a, um, a bit of a shake back and forth, that straightens the sleeper out. Move it along, and then same again. The end goes in the last spaced hole, and then there. Uh, as the sleepers go in, it slowly drops each down each time. So I'm now going to completely space this piece of track, and I'll see you at the end. And there we go, just like that. So, what you will notice is because we've removed sleepers earlier, there is a tiny gap at the end here. Now, realistically, by the time you've um, cut the track down or put your couplings on, your fish plates on, um, you probably need this space anyway, although that's slightly too big. So what I'm gonna do is take one of the sleepers from earlier and just, if I can do, thread it on. If I can do it from a distance. You see, it just closes the gap ever so slightly and makes that piece of track a bit more complete. Right, and there we go. That gets added to the pile of spaced track. Now, I will add, don't forget, this track, you've got to be very careful with it because if you knock it about, you'll have to re-space the sleepers again. Right, so now we've got a small pile of space track. I think it's time to move on and I'll show you how I lay that track now. And of course, I'm not using track plins in the traditional manner. So next comes the fun part, which is actually laying the track and building, furthering the progress on the layout. So I have a very simple process for that. The first step is to lay some cork. Now this is 1 16th cork sheet. Now this is the Gage Master version. Obviously it comes as a big roll, I think it's three foot by two foot, something like that. What I then do, lay it all out flat and cut out strips like this, which are the same sort of width as a piece of track, as you can see there. Now, when you're laying straight track, glue this straight down, no problem at all. If you're going around corners, what I will tend to do is to cut this in half. It's much more flexible to be able to go round a curve. This piece of cork in particular is destined to go from here to here. It's not on a curve, so I can quite literally put some glue down and uh, stick it down in place. And uh, roughly speaking, that being the perfect spot for the track which will go on next. So before I lay my single piece of cork, I'm going to take an unspaced piece of track. Now, the reason I take the unspaced piece is because it's, it holds its uh, 
flexibleness and you can move it round as it will, whereas the spaced track, um, you just cause a world of problems by doing that. So I'm going to place that roughly where I think it's gonna go. And I'm actually using a spacer tool, which I got from the team who are making Pete Waterman's Making Tracks 3. Now, I believe um, that this is perfect spacing. It's just, just a handy tool. You could use anything, but um, it's just a handy tool to uh, be able to make sure the track tracks are always the same distance apart wherever you lay them. So what I will do, I've got a nice anchor point just here with the points. Um, so placing that there, just with a pencil, I'm just gonna mark out very roughly the end, or the sides I should say, of where the track sits, just so it follows the uh, to me, outside line. Now obviously every time I do this, because the track isn't in situ, it's going to move around a bit, but uh, I know that where the pencil marks are is roughly in the right place and the right distance apart. So as long as the cork covers these areas, we'll have to. So put the spacer and the pencil down to one side, <clears throat> rip the piece of track, now, on to copy decks. The uh, rubberized glue that smells like fish that we all had in nursery. This is great stuff because obviously it, it dries very quickly, but it holds a bit of its spring because it is rubber glue. And it holds a bit of its spring. So now, just gonna spread a, a rough line, aiming for generally between the pencil marks. I'm not worried at this stage by the baseboard uh, joins. Obviously this is a modular layout. So just here, for example, there is a baseboard join. I'm not too worried about putting coffee decks in that gap, mainly because uh, you can cut through it and it's quite pliable even when fully stuck. I'm gonna go all the way. And although it's glue, you do have some working time with it, sort of five minutes or so, I find, um, which is plenty of time to uh, fettle around. Now, before I stick that piece of cork down, there's just a bit here that I'm just gonna continue it. Taking the piece of cork, again it's slightly wider than the track so it doesn't really matter about being dead on at this stage and as you go round, as you stick it down you can manipulate it ever so slightly to turn where you need it to turn. go. I need a spare bit for there. So here's a bit I had earlier. And again any gaps and things will be filled up when you ballast it. But uh, adding the cork just adds a nice level of um, height. Very subtle. And of course you can go thicker cork if you want a uh, bigger ballast shoulder. those excess bits and there we are now this cork sheet will probably take 10 minutes or so before it's uh, ready to use so I'm going to use my ballast tubs here the joys of having uh, lots of ballast and scenery and tubs just to weigh it down <clears throat> all the way to the end now one top tip with the baseboard join, which is just here, I'm actually going to take my scalpel, and put it in the, uh, the join of the uh, plywood and just cut a very straight line through the cork. 
because when it comes to splitting the boards the uh, glue will come apart quite nicely especially the copy decks however the cork sheet will rip apart so just by adding that cut there just makes it nice and neat and again put the ballast tub down so that those ends in particular are stuck down nice and firmly. Right, so while the cork is drying a bit further around the corner, I'm going to lay this piece of track. Now, as you can see, this is an unspaced piece of track and I'm just using it just to get my bearings of where the spaced track will go. You can see it's quite a nice curve. So as we can see from the one behind, this is spaced and there's also white pieces of plastic underneath the uh, sleepers. Now they are what's called the super elevation uh, kits. Now I'm using the pack from West Hill Wagon Works. Now I've used a few of these so far and basically what you get in the pack is a series of very small wedges. And basically they go from what's called S0 all the way up to S3 and basically that's the thickness of the wedge and you build them up depending on how uh, banked you want the uh, corner. So these have proved very useful indeed. Um, you do go through them so you do go through quite a few of these packs. I think I'm on my fourth or fifth one uh, so far um, and I'll probably use the bulk of this pack um, on this corner now. However, well worth it. Other things you will need, as usual, um, even though I said I'm not going to use trap pins, I'm not going to have any trap pins that are going to remain in the pieces of track, but I do need some just to help, particularly on the corners, to stop the space track from pinging out and holding its shape while the glue is drying. So I'm going to need my trusty hand drill and some trap pins, and of course a pin hammer, very useful indeed. Scalpel's always useful to get in, especially as you're moving, um, trying to move all these um, uh, elevation bits because um, it gets a bit tricky when the glue is wet, as we'll see in a moment. I do have two track setters. Now, this one, very important, this is the 21 inch track setter. Now, the reason I've got this one is no curve on this layout will be tighter than this. So I know even the minimum curves will be bigger than what is second radius. So all my locos and rolling stock should go around my track, no problem at all, because they're all at least this size. The reason I have the 60 inch track setter is this is the um, optimum curve. So I would like my scenic curves to be at least 60 inch radius. So for example, on this piece of track, here and here, I'd say this one, this is 60 inch curve, and as soon as it gets further and potentially out of the scene up here, it switches to this one, just so it can make the curve much tighter. But it's off scene at that point, so it doesn't matter. But I just have these as a reference. And they're very useful tools to have. And of course, the trusty copy decks once more. So, now I've got my bearings with this piece of track. The first step is to prepare the end of the receiving piece of track, which is pinned at this point, because again, it's gonna be off scene. And I'm gonna put in my spaced track up to it. So, let's go. So as you can see, that's the join I've just put together. I uh, cut the elongated rail with the track snips, no problem at all. And then I put them together with these pair of pliers, which is very useful. Now, you have to remember with these spaced track on the right hand side here, because you've cut the webbing, um, the track doesn't like to bend anymore. And the sleepers, as they move, they won't pull each other around. So the webbing actually has quite a uh, useful purpose. So. Um, you have to remember, you do have to move the sleepers ever so slightly, even though you've uh, spent all that time spacing them, if you're following this process, um, you do have to do it, or be prepared to do it again. Now, starting from here, which is an unspaced piece of track, um, I'm going to place the sleeper tool and basically work my way around. It's much easier this time because we've gone to the effort of already spacing them, 
it's much easier to start from here and work around the corner. So I'm going to do that now and just try and roughly get the sleepers in the right spot. Now because we're going around a curve, this is probably going to uh, affect the sleepers more than if it was just a straight piece of track. So it does look like I'm doing a lot more spacing than I would have done. However, it's worth taking your time to get it right. Like I said, taking the first sleeper, just helping the uh, sleepers into position. And what I'll do as well is as I get to the various corners and see how the track wants to spring back, I will likely put a track pin on the side of the track, not actually through a sleeper or anything, just to stop it from pulling inwards. But you'll see that as we go. So let's get this piece of track spaced and ready for glue. And there we go, we've got to the end of the piece of track. Now, the joys of doing this, of course, is by the time you've spaced this, which takes a couple of minutes, um, the cork for the next piece of track is um, almost ready, so it works quite well. All you have to be wary of at this stage is, um, as you're manhandling the piece of track around, is you want to just visually have a look at the uh, sleepers and make sure none of them have been nudged out of the way because at this stage it's just about getting them the right angle A for the curve, so they've got to be straight to the rails um, but also as, as I'm coming around a curve they can uh, have a habit of not facing the right way which isn't the end of the world really because if you miss the odd one the copy decks you can move it later on but just about trying to uh, be happy um, as best as possible the other benefit as well as once you come out of the curb so it, the track starts to go straight probably about here is you can go on to the uh, the bigger sleeper spacing combs so I've used the medium one um, and it just happens a lot faster when using a bigger comb and of course the next piece of track because I've got enough straight I'll be able to use the really big one and uh, it'll uh, go down much faster which is great so the piece of track is ready, ready to be stuck down, but as it's on the curve, I think it's time to uh, get out the super elevation kits and show you a bit more about how I do that. So here is the Super Elevation pack, all out of its pack, and as you can see you've got four sizes of wedge which I've put just here for you to see. So you've got what's called S0, S1, S2 and S3. As you'd imagine, it starts off with next to nothing and then goes all the way up the scale to probably almost two mil in terms of height. I've probably got that completely wrong. Now the next phase is to basically line these up on the curve depending on how much you want it to be banked so for example back here as you can see at the top of your screens um, I've gone from sort of the S0 then up to S1 and then S2 around the tightest part of the curve and then basically just repeat the process so back to S1 and then to S0 now I've not used S3 on the outside because I wanted to have a slight difference to the two when you look at them. So I'm actually putting S3 on the inside 
track of the two just because this will be the high speed line and therefore the more exaggerated as it's coming round. So the next phase is to uh, basically line these up. They line up with handily two sleepers and uh, I'm just going to line them up on the outside of the track for now and uh, oh, prepare for the fun bit which is gluing it all down. So I've laid these out and this is now my sort of ready for gluing position. Starting from the right hand side here, as you can imagine the train is going that way. Um, you start off very slowly with the S0s, then you go to the S1s, then S2s, S3s, and then back to S2s. Now I've only gone as far, uh, if I turn the camera, I've only gone as far as the baseboard join for now because uh, this piece of track will have work later on. So I've actually only gone thus far. And I'm gluing from here, coming back round. So the next phase is to I just reach and grab it. Grab the coffee decks. And what I'm going to do is raise the end of the, the uh, piece of track that's down, just with something tall, as you can see. Then I'm going to put lots of glue on the cork sheet, drop the track back down, therefore the underside of the sleepers will be coated in glue, and then while that's uh, drying, to, to be fair, but very quickly, I'm then going to glue, put a brush over the top of these and slot them in basically, and uh, all being well, in position that um, should lead to a nice curve. I'll also be using obviously the uh, the old sleeper comb just to make sure they're all uh, staying spaced um, and any problems we can adjust them of course. Now <clears throat> once the wedges are underneath the track um, they can be fun to pick out with your fingers so I use a scalpel just to sort of nudge them about a bit if they've moved. So. I'm going to try and do this bit on film, however I will probably not be talking for this bit, um, but at least I've told you what I'm going to do, so <laughs> wish me luck. that piece of track laid so what I'm going to do just add the spacer tool somewhere prominent then using the ballast tubs from earlier with the corks now dry I'm just going to place them on the rails but along with that I'm going to put some of the ballast tubs up against the sleepers just to stop it stop them sliding down their own uh, elevation pieces and there we go and then uh, of course like the copy decks I'm going to leave that to dry now the joys of this being done is I can now move on to the next piece of track which is a straight piece of track so it's much easier so coming to the other side as we can see this track is now glued and ready to go um, we've got the super elevation in um, and now it's just a case of ballasting it and making it look neat 
and of course lots of testing with lots of different rolling stock. Now I've got the Class 57 because it's a Coco Loco and of course that will be quite rigid and if there's any angles that are too much for it it will soon let me know and of course the Mark IVs because they are the biggest um, in terms of carriage stock. I will go on to test a lot more things. Now you may be wondering why is it creeping round? Now that's quite simply because the track only goes as far as the end of the garage so um, if I got to the end of the layout too quickly it would uh, roll off the end and uh, might make an interesting video but I'd be quite disappointed to lose my Class 57 which I've just noticed has left half its train behind. So while I test a range of rolling stock behind the scenes I'm going to continue with the track laying hopefully this video has been fairly interesting to some um, it's a very different method of laying track for me and uh, I'm glad I've given it a go because I'm quite quite pleased with the results. I'm also pleased to have trains running again. So, as ever, I'm going to say thank you very much to the channel patrons and channel members. You know who you are. Thanks again to everyone else for watching this video. As always, do leave me your comments down below um, and I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think to this um, track lane. Waste of space or worthwhile taking the time and effort? But for now, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. As ever, take care and I'll see you <clears throat> very soon in the next New Junction video. But for now, I think I'm going to uh, go make a brew because it's absolutely freezing.